who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Brethren, look at all the benefits we receive from the Lord. Because of his love and compassion toward every one of us, let's give him praise. Give him honor and glory. Shout hallelujah in your heart unto the Lord. For his care, for his love, the provision, his protection over your life, guiding you from day to day and leading you in the pathway of righteousness, teaching you his word, and making you to understand his will. Let's give him praise. Let's adore his holy name. Open your mouth. Let's open our mouth and worship him. Give him praise. Magnifying his holy name. Let's honor him with praises, adoration, thanksgiving. Shout his glory. Shout to his honor. Looking at all the benefits we have been receiving, his divine provision, loving kindness, tender mercies, let's worship and praise his name. Bringing you here this morning, we need to honor the name of the Lord. We need to praise him. Let's worship his name. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to pray this morning and commit today's service into the hands of the Lord that the Lord will bless everyone here today. Let's open our mouth and pray. That the riches of heaven will come abundantly upon everyone today. Pray that the word of God will reach out to everyone today. Let's open our mouth, brethren, and ask that today's service, that God will use today's service to enrich our lives spiritually. That through today's service, we'll be more steadfast Grounded and rooted in the word of God, in the love of God. Let us pray. Let's open our mouth and pray that no one will come here and go empty-handed. God knows all our needs. And is here, before we even came here, he's here already to bless our lives. So we need to pray today that everyone that comes in here today will be a partaker of the riches of heaven. Let's pray and ask the Lord that the, the treasures of heaven will be opened and blessings in abundance will come down upon every worshiper here today. We want open heaven. We want riches of heaven, the goodness of God from heaven to come down upon everyone here today. So brethren, let's open our mouth and pray and call upon the Lord that through the, today's service, your life, my life, will be transformed. We want transformation here. We want transfiguration in this place. We want translation. Let's pray that God, through today's service, that there will be translation from the kingdom of darkness 
unto the kingdom of life. For sinners, for the first timers, who have not known of the saving grace, that coming to this place today, that God will open your eyes to understand, to see. God will open your ears to, under, to, to hear and to understand the provision of Calvary. So today, let's pray that there will be translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light for these sinners. That no one that comes in here as a sinner will go back home like that. That they will all go back home as saints, transformed, translated. Let's, let's open our mouth. That every worshiper here today will receive mighty blessings from the Lord. Even believers. That will be that transfiguration in our lives today. That you will not remain the same. That God will trans that there will be that transfiguration in your life that will put you on higher ground spiritually. Probably you have come here this morning, weak. You are going back home, strengthened in your inner man. Probably you have come here today, burdened. Oh, that burden will be taken away from you. That burden will be lifted off you. Pray that every worshiper here today will receive something definite from the Lord. Do not close the gate against you, against yourself. Open your mouth and pray. It's as you pray that heaven will open and riches of heaven will come upon your life. So let's pray that every one of us coming here today will meet with God. Let's remember the Greeks the people from those Grecians, they, they came and they said, we will see Jesus. And so here today, that everyone will see Jesus in his glory, in his power. Thereby, our lives will be blessed. We are here for blessing today. And the Lord will bless us. Let us remember and pray for all our brethren that are on their way the Lord will bring them here safely. That nobody will miss the blessing that God asked for him or her. Oh, let's pray that the transportation will be very free and our brethren will be able will come here smoothly and safely as well. Remember all the aspects of the service? The singing, the praying, the teaching, the messages, pray that every aspect of today's service will contribute something enriching into your life. That as we sing, we will sing, and then our heart will be blessed. As we listen to the word of God being taught, oh, our life will be enriched. As we listen to the message today, the Lord himself will minister to us and we shall not remain the same. Every area of our lives will be touched, transformed, transfigured and translated. The Lord will do something marvelous in our lives today. That by the time we end the service and we are going back home, we will be able to say, yes, the Lord has visited us. Pray and commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. Ask the Lord to touch your life today. Ask the Lord for something definite today. Something spiritual. Something supernatural that will make your life better spiritually, stronger spiritually. Pray that today, the service today, we kind of move you forward spiritually. It will kind of move 
take you higher spiritually. You cannot come here and go the same. This is the house of God, the gateway to heaven. And that's why you must ask the Lord today to meet you at the very point of your need. Please pray. Open your mouth and say, Lord, meet me at the very point of my needs. He knows your needs. More than you know, he knows your need. He knows who you are. So that's why you need to really commit yourself unto God that coming here today, the Lord will meet you at the very point of your need and you will not go back empty-handed. Let's pray for all the ministers, our choir members, our ushers, and everyone that will contribute one thing or the other to this service that God will bless them, God will help them. That everything will be done to the glory of the name of, of the name of the Lord. That the singing of our choristers will bless our life. The praying and everything will be for our blessings today. Brethren, they are not going back home empty-handed. God has a package for you, and you are receiving it before you go today. God is opening his treasures and is pouring blessings, riches of heaven upon you abundantly. So you, you must receive today from the Lord. You must receive today from the hand of the Lord. You are a candidate for blessing today. We all know that the presence of God is here already. The grace of the mercy of God, I mean, is towards every one of us here already. And so we pray that everything that will be done will be to his glory, to his honor, and to your blessings. Praise God. Thank him. He has answered your prayers. He's here to bless you today. His riches are coming upon you today. His abundance is coming upon you today. Victory is coming upon you today. Triumph is for you today. You shall be lifted to higher ground spiritually today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for this wonderful day, the day of the Lord, the day of worship. And as we are gathered in your presence, we know your mighty blessings you will bestow upon our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please, before we sing, we please want to announce that there should be no clapping when visitors are called. As we remain standing, we shall be singing from our gospel hymns and songs, number 47. Gospel hymns and songs, number 47. Just obey. Just as God who reigns on high spoke to men in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today, and my brother, this is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. If you are in the Savior's hands, you must do as he commands, for there is no other gospel way. Never put a message by. Never stop to reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. If a mansion's fair, you sigh in that land beyond the sky. After time with you has passed away, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty, both we cry, just obey. Just obey, just obey. Is the way, God's way. When his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey, just obey.
Shall we bow down our heads to pray? Our Heavenly Father, we want to specially thank you for the light of this new day, a special day. Thank you for the privilege you have given us to gather before you so that you can teach us your way and touch our lives. Lord, we are praying that as we go through the pages of the scripture now, you will minister to us in Jesus' name. The grace to be the hearer and the doers of your word, we pray you will endow us in Jesus' name. Speak to us now. We, thy children, thy servant, hear it. Thank you for the answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are all welcome to the search the scripture class this morning in Jesus' name. Last Sunday, in our various churches, our lesson was centered on the topic prescriptions concerning offerings and vow. In the lesson, we saw the demand and command from the Almighty God upon the children of Israel to bring their offerings for a sweet savor unto him. He instructed Moses to command the children of Israel to be devoted to him by presenting their offerings and sacrifices at their due season. It's the same command we have today, that no sooner we become born again, we yield our life unto God. God expects that all heaven endowment upon us, talking about our life, our time, our talent, our resources, must be a devotion to his service. The grace to give ourselves and our all unto him, the Lord will grant unto us in Jesus' name. A better amen. amen. Today, by the grace of God, we are looking at Lesson 120 in our search, the scripture booklet, and it's titled, Defeat of the Midianites and Death of Balaam. Defeat of the Midianites and death of Balaam. Can we have a brother or a sister to recite our memory verse that is coming from Numbers chapter 31, verses 7 and 8? Can we have a brother or a sister? You want to do that? Can you? Okay, our brother there. And the war against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they slew all the males, and the and us and they slew the kings of Media, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Eva, Reke, Zor, Hor and Reba, the, the five kings of Media. Balaam also, the son of Paul, the slew with Saul. Number chapter 31, verse 7 and 8. Thank you very much. A test, we need a brother and sister to help us read our test. Our test is from number chapter 31, verses 1 to 54, but we are taking some selected uh, verses. Can we have a fast reader, please? Okay. You read from verse 1 to 11, 25 to 30, then 51 to 54. You start from verse 1 now. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Harm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand, throughout all the tribes of Israel, shall ye send to the war. So there was delivered out of the thousand of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phineas the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hands. And they warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males, and they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi and Rechem and Zor and Hor and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam also the son of Beryl, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones, and they took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods, and they burnt all the cattle where all the cities wherein they dwelt, and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. Verse 35. From verse and 25. The, Two, five, okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey unto, into two parts between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle, and between all the congregation, and levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons and of the beeves and of the asses and of the sheep, take it of their half and give it to Eleazar the priest for an heave or offering of the Lord. And the children of Israel, half, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons of the beeves and of the asses and of the flocks of all manner of beasts and give them unto the Levites which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty being the rest of the prey which the men of From verse 51 now. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels, and all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord. Of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundred was sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil, every man for himself. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundred and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Thank you very much. As we can see from our text, the focus of our text is the war of revenge, a holy war which God commanded the children of Israel to fight against the Midianites. This is because of their immoral, dirty, sinful life before now and how they lured the children of Israel to do the same. And from time to time, we see that God will always want his servant, his children, his people to fight against sin because when there is sin, the Bible tells us that it must be punished. In the book of Proverbs chapter 11, Proverbs chapter 11, we're told in verse 21, Proverbs 11, verse 21, it says, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So anywhere there is sin, it must be punished, because the eyes of God is of pure, he cannot behold iniquity. That is the reason why God instructed and mandated Moses to command the children of Israel so that they can fight against the Midianites. 
because of their sinful lifestyle before now. Question, state God's instruction to Moses concerning the Midianites. State God's instruction to Moses concerning the Midianites. You have an answer. Can you please signify by raising up your hand? Yes. God waged war. God instructed Moses to wage war against Midianites. Thank you. Is to fight the unrighteousness, the sinfulness of the Midianites. And that should be a reminder to us that sin, unrighteousness, dirty and sinful life will attract the judgment and the wrath of God. We have three points under the lesson this morning. Point number one, command and mobilization of Israel for the battle. Point number two, conquest of the Midianites and death of Bela. Point number three, sharing and management of the spoils of war. Point one now. In number chapter 31, number chapter 31, we are looking at the command and mobilization of Israel for the battle. Number chapter 31, let's see from verse 1 through to verse 6. Verse 1, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel, the Midianites, afterward, Thou shalt be gathered unto, unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the, unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourself unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to war. We can see here the command that God gave to the children of Israel and from what we know in the pages of the scriptures, that, that the command is, this kind of command to fight against unrighteousness and sin is a timeless command of all generation to fight against sin, evil and wickedness, to put away sin where it is found. The command of God here is not to support or encourage revenge or terrorism against others, but that unrighteousness must be fought against so that righteousness will be maintained in the midst of the children of God. And how do we do that today? We are not carrying physical weapons to fight against people for their sinfulness. But rather, the Bible tells us what to do in reaching out so that those who are still living in sin, living on unrighteousness, they'll be able to come out and receive the salvation of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah chapter 58, there in verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up the voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. That's what the way we should do it today, as we fight against unrighteousness and sinfulness in the life of the people. Question number two, why is it wrong for a believer to revenge? Why is it wrong for a believer to revenge? Can you have an answer? Can you? Yes, our sister there. It is wrong because vengeance belongs unto the Lord, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Thank you very much. It's wrong for a believer to revenge, like our sister has said, uh, vengeance belongs unto God. All injustice meted out on us should be committed into, into the hands of God alone, and alone, because... Uh, we see that vengeance belongs unto him. Not only that, under this, we see the prompt obedience of Moses to God's instruction to fight the Midianites. Though knowing that the Midianites were also the descendants of Abraham, that should teach us a lesson, a lesson. 
Question number three now. What should be the believer's attitude toward God's directive when it affects a close relation? What should be our attitude as a believer when God gives directive, God gives us instruction as to what to do? What should be our attitude? You have an answer, can you? From this end, yes, our brother there. Believers should avoid self-interest and do the will of God. Thank you very much. As believers, our attitude should be that there is no sentiment, there is no respect of persons. When God says this is what to do, this is the direction to go, so that his life and call of holiness will be obeyed and his will will be done. In Second Chronicle chapter 15, 2 Chronicle chapter 15, let's see there in verse 16. And also concerning Micah, the mother of Asa the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove and Asa caught her her idol, and stamp it and burn it at the brook Kidron. What do we see here? In the reformation work of Asa, the mother was given to idolatry, and then he removed her, and then burned the idol. That is to show that you don't compromise the word of God when you talk about holiness and righteousness. It is the same thing God expects that we should do no matter how important that person may be to us, no matter how close that person may be to us, we must not compromise the word of God. The will and the word of God must be obeyed implicitly. The Lord will help us to do that in Jesus' name. Point number two, conquest of the Midianites and the death of Balaam. Death of Balaam. In Numbers chapter 31, Numbers chapter 31, we see there from verse 7, Number chapter 31, talking about the death, the conquest of the Midianites, and the death of Balaam. Number chapter 31, from verse 7, it says, And they war against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they slew all the maids, and they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that was slain, namely Evi and Rechem and Zor and Hor and Reba, five kings of Midian, Balaam also, the son of Beor, the slew with the sword. We can see here, the children of Israel defeated the Midianites with few thousands of men. God was their helper and strength. And it is the same thing today, when we are in the center of the will of God. When we maintain the life of holiness and obedience unto him, we see that God will give us the victory needed in whatever areas of our lives, whether in our uh, life battles and challenges. What is important is like Moses, as he was obedient and was prompt in obedience to God, we see that the few men that were sent for the war God gave them victory. And as we obey God and maintain the life of holiness and righteousness, victory will be ours in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, turn your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 8. There we see in verse 31. Romans chapter 8, in verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? In verse 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conqueror through him that loved us. It was the presence of God with the children of Israel as they went, you know, for this war that gave them the victory. We should learn to maintain the life of obedience to God, life of holiness and righteousness, and the victory will always be there for us with the testimony like that of man, the man of God, Paul say, thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. As we walk in the path of purity and holiness, the victory of the Lord will be ours in Jesus' name. Also, another important lesson uh, here 
is all about the death of Balaam with the Midianites in another, is another great lesson. For what we know from the scriptures, uh, we see that Balaam desired to die the death of the righteous at the beginning of his walk with God. But we see that he could not maintain that life of obedience, the life of holiness, the life of yielding to the will of God all through to the end. Convertiousness came in to some other, it could be morality, it could be lying, it could be branching to, into anything that is contrary to the will of God. And that is a big lesson to you and I if we are believers, that we should know God expects that we maintain a holy walk, a righteous walk with him all through to the end. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, there in verse 12, verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take his, lest he fall. I pray you will not fall in Jesus' name. So we must watch over our life. We must put our body under. We must make sure that we take it to the warning and the instructions of the word of God all the days of our life. The expectation of God is that we walk with him in holiness, in righteousness, all the days of our life. It is only by so doing we'll be able to have access into his kingdom at the end, at the end of the day. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. We go to point number three, sharing and management of the spoils of war. Sharing and management of the spoils of the war. In number chapter 21, numbers chapter 31 rather, it tells us uh, from verse 25, Numbers 31 from verse 25. The scripture tells us there in verse 25, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the pew that was taken, both of man and beast, and Eleazar the priest, and the chief father of the congregation, and divide the pew into two parts, between them that took the war upon them, who went out to the battle, and between all the congregation. As we can see here, the Almighty God himself was the one that commanded Moses how the sharing should be done. And we see that the sharing of the spoil of war among the people was to all and sundry, you know, those who went for the war and the priests and the others who were around at that particular time. And that should be a, a great, a good lesson unto us. Question now, question number four, point out some basic principle from the way the Israelites share the spoils of war. Can we learn, can we share some basic principle from the way the Israelites share the spoils of war. You have an answer, can you, maybe from the choir? Yes. Um, we saw that there was fairness and equity. There was fairness in sharing the, what they brought from war between the soldiers and the congregation. And as believers, whatever we have in our disposition, we should be fair in giving it out and also giving back to God for His graciousness and His mercy over us. Thank you very much. As Moses, God commanded Moses to do the sharing, we we'll see that all were considered. It's not just a selfish thing. And as we relate that to what God expects from us today, Whatever God has endowed our life with, you know, the gift, the grace, and the blessings that we may be talking about in our life, the Lord is expecting that we should share among all. That is the expectation of God. We should not be selfish. And when we talk about the impartation of the grace of God in our life, we should go out. Just like the lepers, 
We read about in the book of 2 Kings chapter 7, from verse 8 to 9. They were lepers, and they went, you know, to the place of war, we're thinking that maybe we'll go, whatever happened to us, let it happen. But God favored them. God gave them victory. And they were able to gather everything that, you know, was available unto them. And then at the end of that, they decided we do not wear. If we do not go back and share what God has provided, uh, you know, unto us. All of us, without the grace of God, without the mercy of God, without the goodness of God, we are like, you know, these lepers. And it is the grace of God that has made us what we are. And so whatever endowment we have, you know, we should be able to share, to bless other people, care for the needy, and help for the helpless, so that by the grace of God, our life become a blessing unto all. And as we learn this beautiful lesson this morning, the Lord will help us, the grace we have to be born again, and to have the Spirit of God, and to have the knowledge of the Word of God. We will go out and share with other people and preach the gospel. And if there are other things God has endowed our life with, we should share with others so that we can be a blessing unto them. That's what God told Father Abraham. He said, I will make you a blessing. I will bless you, and I will make you a blessing. And as God blesses us in all these areas of our life, our prayer this morning is that the Lord will make you and I a blessing in Jesus' name. A better amen. amen. Can we rise up as we pray together now? The Lord has spoken to us. The Lord has ministered to us. Let's pray that all that the Lord has taught us under this lesson, the defeat of the Midianites and death of Balaam, pray that the Lord will help you. If you have started well, that the Lord will help you to end well. If you are not yet born again, God is against sin. Sin will bring, will attract the wrath and the judgment of God into your life, into your family, and so repent and give your life to Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the teaching of your word. The entrance of your word has given us light. I pray the grace to continually walk in that light. You will endow us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. If you have any question from what we've been taught this morning, can you please come to the front here? If you have any question from what our teacher has taught us this morning. Please, let's be quick about that. Let's come to the front here. Here, please, to my left hand side. Yes, brother, let's have your question. Good morning, sir. Um, the, my question is from the point one of our lesson this morning command and mobilization for Israel to battle. Sir, I want to look at this uh, uh, point one in view of we New Testament church. By the special grace of God, we are not fighting blood and flesh, but principality and powers. And if we want to take anything from a strong man, we need to bind him. Now, my question is this. After we have done all this, and we now move out to obey the great commission that the Lord has committed in our hands, and then after we have ministered, and God give us victory over Satan, 
who has been captivating all these sinners. And we are able to talk to them and we win them. And we now invite them to our weekly meeting. And for example, the church I came from. What's your question, please? My question is the church I came from for over 40 years now, the church has not been built. And these are the people we are to bring to church to hear the word of God. So please, what can the church do? Because we are not getting converts. Even our members are leaving because we don't have a place of conduciveness for our service. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That other person. Good morning, sir. Let's start from the study today. Um, from the point two, we are told that when they came from the point two, they brought something, they brought some people along with them, and the Moses was not happy about it. And um, in, our, in our dispensation now, I believe our leaders in for adventure, they ask you to do something, and you didn't do it. Or maybe you, did, you go against it and you brought it up. Sir, this is what I saw. They will ask you that you should return it back. Sir, why was it not? Why didn't Moses instruct them to, make, to find justice to those people that they brought? Why did Moses do what? Why didn't? That's not the fact that Moses was not happy when they brought some other women. When they brought some women and love with them, Moses was not happy because they were disobedient. So I want to know, because in our dispensation now, our leaders, when they give us an instruction, and maybe in one way or the other, you now brought something to them, they will tell you, no, return it back to the owner, or return it to where you bring it from. And Moses did not tell them that, go and find justice to these people that you brought. Sir, why was it not done? Praise the Lord. The first question that our brother asked about going out to win souls, and yet we don't see these people coming in. Winning soul is a spiritual battle, like we see in the life of the children of Israel as God commanded Moses. And as a church, we have been commanded to go out and preach the gospel. But at times we fail to do the necessary things. Like Paul the Apostle put it, let's see in Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, that is what we need to do in most cases after we have gone out to preach the gospel. Paul said in, in Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, my little children of whom I travel in birth, until, until Christ be formed in you. Paul the Apostle here traveled, that is prayer. He prayed for these people, he prayed for his converts, so that they would be established in the kingdom, so that Christ would be formed in them. And when we go out, we should not forget what Jesus said. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's number one. And it's righteousness. It's righteousness. So these people we are bringing to the Lord, preaching to them, they must continue in the righteousness of God. And that has to do with establishing them in the kingdom. That in most cases, when we go out, just going out to obey the church, we come out, we come in, oh, we have won 1,000 souls. But are we praying for them? In our process, are we praying for them? As a church, are we really praying for these people? Because this is spiritual battle. And we need to correct that as members of the church and as a church that after we have gone out, we must ensure that prayer is organized to ensure that these people are integrated in the kingdom. I pray that the Lord will correct us and with that correction in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord has taught us great lessons today in our topic of today. Our passage of today 
has to do with obedience to what God commanded Moses to do. God commanded Moses to execute the judgment that he gave concerning the Midianites back in Numbers chapter 25. And Moses obeyed implicitly. He waged war against the Midianites, and the Lord helped him. Why was he to do that? Because the Midianites, uh, they, they lured the children of Israel into sin, sin of idolatry and sin of sexual immorality. The Lord is speaking to us as well as a church that we have to learn great lesson in this. In Romans chapter 15 verse 4, we were told that these things are written for our learning, for admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. And as we look at this passage of today, we have great lessons to learn, plenty lessons to learn. Number one, we see care for God's people. Care for God's people. In our text, Numbers chapter 31, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward, shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. Avenge them. In verse 3. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the wall, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of the Midianites. Moses obeyed here. With that, in spite of the, his uh, filial affiliation with the Midianites, remember, his wife is from Media. Remember, his father-in-law, Jethro, from Media. That's why he married and had his ch children. But as God brought the commandment unto him, commanding him to wage war against them, he did not refuse. And as our teacher taught us, it's a great lesson we learned there that no filial affiliation or relationship should deter us in obeying the commandment of the Lord. We see the care for God's people here. At this time, the Israelites were down. They were demoralized because 24,000 men have died as a result of sin of immorality and idolatry that Balaam introduced to them through, uh, through Moab, the Moabites. And God did not overlook it. God punished them. 24 people, 24,000 men died. So that should demoralize them. But at the same time, they have to summon courage. And God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Whatever you are going through, even though the enemy has put your, uh, your back down, you are here this morning. He's telling you, rise up again. You are here for a purpose today. Rise up again. Don't brood on your own sin. Rise up again. He will help you. As the Lord helped the children of Israel, so he will help his children today in Jesus' name. I said he will help us in Jesus' name. So God cares for his people. And you should be very, you will be rest assured of that, that in your own case, God cares for you. As a church, God cares for us. Amen? I believe you heard on Thursday at the power night, Jesus told us that is the power of speech control. That's number two. Don't answer your enemy. Heaven will answer for you. Amen? I said heaven will answer for you. And that is it. So God cares for his people as he cared for the children of Israel. We also learned another lesson. Caution for God's people. Caution for God's people. The people of God here, at that moment, they were, they were asleep spiritually. You see that in Numbers chapter 25, let's see what actually brought the defeat. Numbers chapter 25, I read from verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit boredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat, and bowed down to their gods. Verse 3. 
and Israel joined himself unto their pure, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. They were sleeping spiritually. They were not aware of the plot of the enemy. They were not aware of what Balaam has done and what the Moabites were coming to do. So they were mingling with them, eating with them, and as a church, we have to be very careful. Who are the people that are coming to us? Who are the people that are inviting us? Who are the people we are putting into the workforce? We need to be awake. We need to be awake that the children of Israel here, they were sleeping spiritually. But thank God for somebody like Elias and Phinehas, the son of Elias, the son of Aaron, the priest. He got to see that Midianite coming into the, in, into, the, into the camp of Israel as Simri, who's supposed to know better, a child, a, 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 a Jew, a child in Israel, went outside there to bring Cosby, a daughter of one of the kings of Media, and he was awake spiritually. He was alert spiritually. And Phineas said, no, this cannot continue. He took a javelin and struck both of them. And the Bible says, and the place stayed. Caution for us as a church that we need to be very careful who and what we mingle it. As we see this man, the prophet so-called, that is Bela, we still have it today. Let's see the caution, the warning from Apostle Peter. In First Peter, Second Peter chapter 2, Second Peter chapter 2, I'll read from verse 1. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, sorry, Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Verse 3, And through covetousness shall they with fain words have merchandise of you, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation trumpeted not. For if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them into hell, and deliver them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So there are false prophets among them. So also false prophets today. So we need to make sure that by the Spirit of God, we detect them. It's not everybody that comes to the Arts Fellowship, you give something to, to, to minister to the people. Or even the district church, we must make sure we vet them very well. Look at it in verse uh, 14. Numbers 12, verse 14. Talking about Balaam here. Having the eyes full of adultery, and I cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and hearts they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. We have to be very guided as a church. How do you dress to church? How do you dress to fellowship? Half naked. Look at it today. It's happening today. And the Apostle Peter was saying, these people, their eyes of, are full of adultery, beguiling unstable souls. They are here among us today. That's why we have to be very careful as a church. Verse 15, which are forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Bela. Can you see it? Following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. We know that Balaams are still here today. People like Balaam are still parading themselves today. As, a, as false prophets, we must be weary of them. We must not go with them. He that bidded him God's speed, the Bible says, is a partaker of his sin. The question is, where do you go? Where do you attend? 
Who do you listen to? Who are the people you invite to our fellowship? Other house fellowship, even the district church. I hope we are not inviting false prophets because they will not do us good. I pray God will help us as a church, as, as, as individuals in Jesus' name. Balaam will not have his way in our lives, in our church, in Jesus' name. Because upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell, I said the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. What lesson last week we learned? We learned that there is cure for greed. This Balaam, false prophet, in fact, Joshua said, Balaam is what? He's a soothsayer. So don't say, well, because he was, he believed, he was from Gentile stock. A soothsayer. We should not have anything to do, do with such people. And we have learned lesson that because of his greed, he could not repent. And as, a, as an individual, you must ensure that you don't have greed in your life, taking hold of you as a person. Of course, as a child of God, you must be clear of all that. But if you have been overtaken with greed, there are solution. And what is the solution? Repentance. Repentance. You have to repent. Balaam had that opportunity to repent, and he did not repent. But you are here today, you have the opportunity, you have the privilege to repent, repent of that your sin, and the Lord will help you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sin may be blotted out. You need to repent of that atrocity. You need to repent of that sin. You need to repent of that covetousness. Repent of that idolatry so that your sin will be blotted out. And as a church, we pray that the Lord will help us as a congregation that whatever thing we have done to allow Bela will repent of it as well in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and go to God in prayer. The Lord has taught us wonderful lessons today. I want you to rise up, and I want you to pray earnestly that God will help you. God will help you by the grace of God that will make heaven. Is anybody pursuing you? Is there any perceived enemy? You have learned lesson. Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay. Why don't you commit yourself unto the Lord this morning that the Lord will take over. Take over. Don't answer your enemy heaven will answer for you. Our Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We appreciate you for the great lessons you have, we have learned from your world this morning. We thank you for the care you have for us as your children. We thank you for the power that is able to see us through. Lord, we pray that this morning, as many as have been caught in the web of greed, and as they repent this morning, forgive them in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for our church, we pray for our fellowship, that you get rid of all these people who are Balaam-like in our midst in Jesus' name. As many as have been deceived, as many as have been enticed, Lord, we pray that you wake them up. Minister to them, O oh Lord, and bring them back to real fellowship with you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.
We shall please all rise up as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, number 100. Gospel hymns and songs, number 100. Christ, a mighty captain. Christ, a mighty captain, leads against the foe. We will never falter when he bids us go. Though his righteous purpose we may never know, yet we'll follow all the way. Satan's fearful onslaughts cannot make us yield. While we trust in Christ, our buckler and our shield, pressing ever on the spirit sword we wield, and we follow all the way. Let our glorious banner ever be unfold. From its mighty stronghold, evil shall be hauled. Christ, our mighty captain, overcomes the world, and we follow all the way. Fierce the battle rages, but will not be long. Then triumphant shall we join that blessed throng, joyfully uniting in the victor's song, if we follow all the way. Forward, forward, it is the Lord's command. Forward, forward, the promised land. Forward, forward, let the chorus ring. We, shall sure, we are sure to win. 
with Christ our King. Gospel hymns and songs, number 253. Gospel hymns and songs, number 253. My portion forever. All, all to Jesus, I consecrate anew. He is my portion forever. Only his glory, henceforth will I pursue. He is my portion forever. All, all to Jesus, my trusting heart can say. He is my portion forever. Led by his mercy, I'm walking every day. He is my portion forever. 
Though he may try me, this blessed truth I know is my portion forever. He will not leave me. His, pro his promise tells me so. It's my portion forever. Take, take the world with all its gilded toys. Take, take the world. I covet not its joys. Mine is our wealth. No moth, no rust destroys. Jesus, my portion forever.
we shall please remain standing as we continue to pray. Let us give God, uh, God the glory. Let's honor his name. Glorify his name today that you are in the presence of God. And the Lord is going to bless your life. The Lord is going to do wonderful things in your life today. Please thank the Lord and worship him. And pray that as you are in his presence today, all that God has for you, you will receive in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It is now time to receive our tithes and offering. Please put your hands into your bags and pockets and please raise up your offering as we pray before you drop it in the bags being carried by our leaders. Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful morning. We pray that as we are gathered in your presence, your mighty blessings will come upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we give our tithes and offering now, we pray you will accept it from our hands and use it for the expansion of your glory here on earth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please drop your offering in the box, being carried around by our leaders as we continue to pray. Prayer for the nations. Prayer for the nations. We want to pray that God we take over the governance of this nation and make the nation to enjoy all our natural resources. Let's open our mouth and pray that God will take over the governance of Nigeria as a nation and make this nation to enjoy all our natural resources provided by the Lord. Let's open our mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Prayer for our GS. That the vision for the world evangelization that God has given unto him will continue to get brighter day by day. The vision for the world evangelization. Shall we pray for our GS right now? That that vision will continue to get brighter day by day. The vision for the world evangelization. Please, let's open our mouth and pray. That nothing will obscure this vision from getting brighter. That day by day, the vision keeps on getting brighter. In Jesus' name, we pray. Prayer for the church. That our church, deeper life, Bible Church, Deeper Christian Life Ministry, that in this end time, we shall continue to stand in the truth, even to the end. Let's pray right now, that we shall continue to stand in the truth, even to the end. Pray for the church, all our churches, all over the world, everywhere, leaders, members, and everyone, we shall continue to stand for the truth, even to the end. Now, don't, nothing will derail us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful time. And as we have prayed unto you, we trust and believe you have answered all our prayers in Jesus' name. Lord, we still look unto you that this morning, riches of heaven, riches of grace, oh Lord, you will pour abundantly upon every worshiper here today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered.